What's up my comic comrades and happy holidays. We know this year has been the weirdest time of our lives, but we want to wish you all a safe and happy Christmas week. And speaking of 2020 being a weird year, due to the pandemic, we've been waiting for the release of Wonder Woman 1984 since early summer. The drop date was moved several times with it ultimately landing on Christmas Day. And while we thought it was going to get moved again, Warner Brothers decided to shake up the entire film industry by announcing that they are keeping the Christmas release date and releasing it on HBO Max simultaneously at no extra charge for subscribers. Which is a huge move, but Warner didn't stop there. A couple of days later, they announced that they would be releasing every movie on their 2021 slate the exact same way. With a limited run release in theaters for those who wish to see it on the big screen and simultaneously on HBO Max for those who prefer to watch it at home. Needless to say, this was a massive move on Warner Brothers' part, one that will likely have long-term effects on the movie industry as a whole. So Tim and I discussed that decision and all of our thoughts on a recent episode of Variant the Podcast, which you can find right here. Speaking of our podcast, we'll also be giving our full spoiler review of Wonder Woman 1984 on the podcast after the new year. So if you're not already, you definitely want to subscribe to Variant the Podcast here on YouTube or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. You can also find links for each of those in the description below. Now, with Santa only a couple days away from dropping Wonder Woman 84, we're going to follow suit with three Wonder Woman themed episodes for your Christmas enjoyment, starting with today's Origin of the Amazons, followed by History of Cheetah on Christmas Day, and then we'll wrap things up with the Origin of Maxwell Lord on Sunday. So be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the Wonder Woman goodness. But with that covered, let's dive into the Origin of the Amazon race, shall we? The Amazons first appeared in All Star Comics issue 8 in January of 1941. They were created by William Moulton Martin and Harry G. Peter. Now, depending on which origin you're pulling from, and we're going to go through a few, the Amazons were created by Aphrodite, or they were created from clay by the Olympian gods over 3,000 years ago. They were created by the Olympian gods in order to serve as messengers to the world in the name of peace and justice. But either way, the Amazons will live in safety on Themyscira and seclusion from the world dominated by men. And what's crazy is as long as the Amazons stay on Themyscira or Paradise Island, they don't age. Again, there's been several iterations of the Amazon's origin, like when George Perez reworked it following Crisis on Infinite Earths. Then even more changes happened in Infinite Crisis, and then it changed yet again in the New 52 before being changed back to its original post-crisis continuity in DC Rebirth. So let's run through most of them briefly in order. Originally in post-crisis continuity, the Amazons as we know them now were a race of immortal superwomen that lived on the magical island of Themyscira, also called Paradise Island. They were granted life by Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Yes, I realize I already mentioned some of this, but just stick with me. The strongest of these women, and most human-like of the Amazons, was Princess Diana, aka Wonder Woman. So much so, once Steve Trevor crash-landed in Themyscira, Wonder Woman left her protective island and sisters, giving up her immortality to fight the forces of evil in man's world. Now, some people may be asking about Wonder Woman's immortality at this point. She's not immortal once she left the island. She just ages incredibly slow, kind of like Superman. The Amazons were also given something called the Magic Sphere. It was given to them by Athena, the goddess of war. With this device, the Amazons were able to see man's world from the present and past, sometimes they could even see the future. With this sphere, the Amazons were able to surpass the inventions of man-made civilization. So not only were the Amazons stronger and smarter, but their weapons were far more advanced and their aircrafts were way faster. Then after post-crisis continuity in the mid-1980s after Crisis on Infinite Earths, the DC Universe updated a lot of their characters' origins. The Amazons were now created by the goddess Artemis from the souls of women who had died by the hands of men and were given new and stronger bodies that were made from clay and then transformed into flesh and blood. Just like in pre-crisis continuity, the Amazons escaped Hercules and Army to isolate themselves on the magically protected island of Themyscira. Now, I realize I didn't mention the Amazons escaping Hercules when I was talking about their pre-crisis origin, but that's because I figured I'd wait till now because two birds, one stone. Anyway, during Infinite Crisis, because Wonder Woman failed her mission on Man's World, Themyscira and all the Amazons were removed from Earth's realm by the Athenian gods. But don't worry, they would return led by the resurrected Hippolyta. Then in the New 52, the history of the Amazons was revised once again. They were still a supernaturally strong woman race, and they still came from Themyscira, but the most notable and controversial change to their history was as follows. They added that the Amazons would mate with men three times each century in order to continue their lineage. How would they do this, you ask? Well, they got completely naked and then would raid ships and seduce the men on them to have sex with them. But it gets better. Once the deed was done, the men were killed to protect the island's secrecy. Then nine months later, all the girls that were born were celebrated while all the boys were taken from their mothers. Needless to say, this aspect of their origin was quite controversial and was later retconned and changed back to their previous origins for DC Rebirth, which stated they were immortal and they were conceived from souls of women who had died at the hands of man. But that wraps up the origin of the Amazons, my friends. As you can see, it's got some controversial elements to it, but it's a good public safety announcement for any of you who are sailors. If you're out at sea and you suddenly have a group of insanely attractive women appear out of nowhere and attempt to seduce you, just say no. My dudes, just say no. No. Anyway, let us know what you think of the Amazon's origin in the comment section down below.
First up, we have Batman Beyond issue 50. The final of Dan Jurgen's iconic run of Batman Beyond finds Terry McGinnis accused of crimes he didn't commit. Next, we have Maestro issue 5. The Hulk is dead, long live the Maestro. But this is no good night lullaby. It's non-stop action as the secrets behind Future Imperfect finally come to light. Here we have Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Secret Origin issue 1. The DCU's darkest secrets are explored while two titans clash. The heroes search for a way to defeat the darkest night through the universe's past, while Superboy Prime faces down the demonic Batman. And finally, we have King in Black issue 2. Null has finally arrived on Earth and already killed the Avenger Silver Bullet. But what does the God of the Abyss have next for Earth's Mightiest Heroes? And just like that, my comic comrades, that brings another episode of Variant to a close. But if you like today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.